Crossroads Media. It doesn't get much uglier than what we just witnessed in Queens. Picture this. Picture someone pantsing you, tying your shoelaces together, and then asking you to run 30 feet. That's exactly how the Phillies just played. And that's exactly how Alec Boehm ran the bases. We'll get to that. This showed you from top to bottom how this organization has been embarrassing. Let's start with Dave Dombrowski. I never want to see Austin Hayes in a Phillies uniform again. He blows. He actually blows. Now, the lineup. I don't want to go down 2-1 in the NLDS with Edmundo Sosa in for Stott. Maybe boom at this point because this kid has a problem. But for Stott, no. That bobble that happened with bases loaded where you only recorded one out at home probably, no, not probably, would have been a double play if Stott was in there to field it cleanly. Then the six is completely different, and who knows how the later stages finish. Probably would still be ugly, to be fair, because the Phillies offense did exactly what the Phillies offense does. They made guys like Sean Manaya look like Randy Johnson in his prime. Sean Manaya is not that good. He's not that good. Spare me arm slot. Spare me crossfire. Whatever the hell they're talking about for 90 minutes of a damn broadcast. Look where he winds up in the bullpen. Shove it up your ass. I don't care. He is not as good as what the Phillies made him out to be. He was on the brink of getting ran out of that game. And instead, I watched a piss poor at bat by Bryce. And Nick lined out with a rocket, which doubled up our base runners. And that's where the game got out of hand. Kyle Schwarber was down 0-2. My man battles back to a full count and eventually walks. Trey walks. That's it. That's it right there. That's the game. And Bryce, with that change up first pitch, he wanted it. Now, Rob mentioned post-game that that's where you got to pass the baton. I say those are calculated risks. What we can't do is scream about how exciting his clutch moments are and then get angry when he's willing to take a shot at one of those big clutch moments. When he connects on them, we say this is the greatest thing in the world. If he swings out of his shoes and unfortunately messes up or thinks it's a different pitch, whatever it is, you have to live with those results. Where I'm more aggravated It's the following pitches after the first pitch. That's where maybe we can talk a little bit more. As for Nick, he hit the uh, the ball hard as hell. That was more of an unfortunate thing more than anything else. But there's no doubt the game changed the moment the Mets got out of that inning. And then, of course, the whole Aaron Nola situation played out. And the Nola situation... It's a weird one. The stat line screams, holy hell, Nola stinks. He wasn't as crisp as he needed to be. With that said, though, when he allowed just two solo shots, one to Pete Alonzo, one to Jesse Winker, and you're through five innings, if two solo shots murder you, and that's what defeats you that badly, then your team is a problem. The sixth happened, Kirkering comes in and 
Very bad spot for him. He gets two outs before Marte delivers and gives the Mets some insurance. I thought they were actually going to find a way. But then, shame on me, because this bullpen doesn't know how. They don't know how. Everybody who comes in gets hit. Now, some of them are put in unfortunate situations, like when Jose Alvarado's in the game. But think about this. We're three games into this series, right? We're three games into the playoffs. I've seen Tanner Banks and Jose Alvarado, who essentially got kicked into a no-man's-land territory here in your pen, and they are pitching. That means you're getting your ass kicked! Or you're kicking ass. But I hate to break it to you. It hasn't happened that way. It's unacceptable. You are getting your teeth kicked in by the Mets. But once again, isn't this Phillies baseball? Isn't this who they are? They are the team that goes through nine innings with two hits, with three hits, and shows zero signs of life. And then they also can have all the responses needed throughout a nine-inning game. Or they can hit four home runs. A lot of guys, though, are struggling. JT doesn't have a hit. He doesn't have a hit. Kyle Schwarber outside of the leadoff bomb to set the tone. What has Kyle Schwarber really done? So there's a lot of big, important pieces to your roster that aren't making enough noise. Hit list through three games in the NLDS. Best catcher in baseball, right? Can't happen. So, once again, it goes from the Dave Dombrowski awful way of approaching the deadline. Just getting marginal players that, you know, I don't, I don't even know how to describe them. And by the way, Estevez... He allowed a run. Everybody. Everybody allows runs out of the pen. Everybody. You're never going to win that way. Not this time of the year. Grow some balls. Grow some hair on them. And go! Do something with it. Your number's called. Figure it the hell out! Do I have faith? It's an interesting question. Do I have faith? (sighs) Here's the thing. Knowing how wildly inconsistent they are, of course they're going to win game four. I'm rolling my eyes, by the way. So do I really feel it? It's hard to. I don't think you have the pitching for it. I'd send Zach Wheeler out there if, if, He feels comfortable pitching on such short rest. But there's no game five in Philadelphia if you don't win tomorrow night. So I don't know what you do when you're back home. Well, I do. It would be some combination of Ranger plus. But if Zach Wheeler's up to the challenge and feels good body-wise, I'm not putting him in harm's way, but I have to really consider it. Don't think it happens. Dave failed you. Rob has failed you. Kevin Long slash the offense in totality has failed you. Guys like Bohm failed you. I said it before. I'll say it again. This Alec Bohm, whatever version this is, he was the one who knocked in runs for you. For the regular season. He batted cleanup. He scorched doubles left and right. Now. He's hurting you. His presence hurts you. And that's as bad as it gets. People struggle in baseball. Right? JT doesn't have a hit. Kyle hasn't done enough. But they don't, they, they don't give off that terrible smell of vomit. Alec Bohm's presence is equivalent to Nick Sirianni. Let that sink in. And I don't know if it's fixable. I 
don't think any sort of at back can change that. Whatever happened is systemic. I think Nick might be the perfect way to compare the two. Because you can't fix Nick Sirianni and the way that he talks to his team and whatever you want to think can happen with the Eagles won't happen because of Nick Sirianni. Well, we might be looking at the same thing with Alec Bohm. So anyway, I don't know if I necessarily finished my overall thoughts on Aaron Nola. He wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough. But he's nowhere as bad as the haters will say he was. He had to grind. I thought he actually got Pete Alonzo in the sixth on the outside part of the plate. But once he got walked, and, and I thought he actually made adjustments to Pete Alonzo or at least started to execute a little bit better. I'd have to go back and watch the uh, everything that panned out during the home run that Pete Alonzo hit and went opposite field with. But I do believe he found a way to essentially freeze Pete Alonso. He wasn't looking for what Aaron Nola was throwing, or at least wasn't looking to pull the trigger on those pitches that he was throwing. Uh, he kind of neutralized them there for a little bit. I thought he rung them up in the sixth. Close call. Aaron Nola wasn't good enough, but he wasn't nearly as bad as what the numbers indicate. That's how I sort of describe it. But wasn't good enough. If that's the main staple you want to take away from it, not good enough, by all means. That's fair. When you give up two solo shots, though, if that's the kryptonite, spare me it's demoralizing when the fans rise because of the long ball. It's two runs. Two runs. When your team is pressing, and when you could probably tell, shit, our offense doesn't have it today, Do you know how much pressure that puts on the pitching staff? Because you do essentially have to be nails. And you can't make a damn mistake. Why can't Sean Mania give up a a home run? I thought Schwarber got to one early. Look, the exit velocity was what? The first three batters, all three of them? Schwarber, Turner, Bryce, all over 106 miles per hour? So they were getting to Sean Mania early. You thought the long game would indicate we'll get to him eventually. But the problem was, same thing was happening to Aaron Nola. This guy was getting absolutely tattooed. You had a good defensive play by Nick Castellanos. Uh, the transfer is where he dropped the ball, so you got the ball in after that. You know, it probably could have been worse if Nick didn't make such a spectacular play out in right field. <sighs> That's when we thought there was a chance. Mm-mm, mm-mm. So disappointing. I'm angry. Don't get me wrong. I really, really am angry. But I'm upset. They've upset me. This team, this group. When the playoffs come around, you got to be ready. You got to be more disciplined. You got to know and understand how to get it done this time of the year. And you did. You did. For two straight years. And now when you are expected to be the team, to beat a division rival, they're going to let them beat you up this badly? I, I mean, it's not close. This isn't close. Right? You got hit hard. And here's the one area that gives me a smidge of faith. It's always difficult to put away teams. It's getting that fourth win in a seven-game series, or in this case, it's getting that third win in a five-game series. It's a lot of vets in this clubhouse. You could talk about urgency all you want, but until there actually is no other option, Maybe that urgency doesn't show up the way you need it to. It's sort of like fight or flight, that mentality. When when your instincts kick in, yo, if you don't excel here, it's all finished. Maybe that pressure is what kicks in a level that they haven't been able to kick into yet. Once again, I'm desperate as hell. This is me really reaching. 
to see if we get the great version of the Phillies. That's why my heart is broken on a day-to-day basis. Because I don't know the constant. I don't know the constant. When they take the mound and when they take the field on a day-to-day basis, I, I don't know what I'm getting. I don't know if I don't, I don't know the constant is the right way to describe it, but they're inconsistent as hell. There's no consistency. So we just have to pray that it's the good Phillies that show up. And who knows what's happening with this pitching staff. All right, hey, we'll take calls. First, though, garage beer. No bitterness, okay? Which is fantastic. Beer that tastes like beer. Definitely not an IPA. Garage beer, it's the only beer I drink. And that's why my, my mini fridge here is stacked to the brim of garage beer. Make sure you give it a whirl. All right, with that, we'll take some calls. I'm not surprised. Noah, you can fault him for the two solo home runs, but for the most part, Aaron did his job. You have to be upset at Schwarber, Turner, Bryce, Castellanos. I'll say most of my rage for Alec Baum because that dude, two for what, 36, 37, probably two for 40 right after this game, he's a bum. Swings at every first pitch. Killed any momentum we had in the eighth inning to even get a good rally going. We were already down six nothing, but who the fuck cares? Do I expect this team to uh, come back from adversity? I think we saw the answer to that last year and see if they're able to do that. So, Ranger in the mound, does he, does he do a good game? Who knows? Frankly, who cares? Well, I do care. To be fair, I do care. I want Ranger to throw a gem. I want this team to blast back, win 6 nothing, have one of those games. Now everyone's questioning, ah, shit. What the hell is going to happen game five with wheels? I-, I do care. Oh, I care. I promise you, I care. I get saying right after the game that you don't, but you do. You do. It's a defensive mechanism. Of course, we care. The Bohm experience, though, is tragic. I could only imagine. Because I'm walking through this, right? And I have no inside information. It's all gut feel that Rob Thompson and Alec Bohm do not see eye to eye. And they are very unhappy with one another. But if he's constantly going up there for multiple at-bats... In this game three. And he's swinging at the first pitch. Like a religion. He has to be told that that's okay, right? Right? There's no way. That after Bohm gets benched. After he pinched hit and did it. And then gets an opportunity to start. In game three on the road. If he was told to be better, to do things differently, and he didn't, then we're talking, I mean, I mean, do you know how disrespectful that is to a manager like Rob Thompson and to your teammates? So reflecting back on it, I have to imagine that Kevin Long, and anybody else who's in discussions about how we are acting at the plate is okay with it. I think it's crazy. But there's no way he's being that much of an ass, right? Because if he is, then he can't play tomorrow. And I guess maybe the lineup will tell us exactly what's being said behind closed doors. I don't know. I just couldn't imagine. Let's use my own personal experience. Let's say I'm doing a show on the radio station. I meet with the program director regularly. We go over a lot of stuff. We listen to my shows. We listen to the audio. We discuss what I could do better, what I can work on, all kinds of stuff. I love it. It's great. I could never imagine him saying, do not do X, Y, and Z. And then four straight shows, I do X, Y, and Z, and we sit down and we go, 
what are you doing? And then I look at him in the face, I say something, and then the next time we go listen back to the tape, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. So is Boehm, is Boehm being given the nod that he's allowed to be having these type of at-bats? And if so, who do we talk about then? Kevin Long? I don't know. This whole thing's messy, but it smells like a bunch of BS. You know when there's something happening that's super messy and super gross. This bone thing is a thousand percent there. Now, there was something else I wanted to touch on as I was rambling. I may have lost it. Maybe it comes back to me. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe I'll take another call and it might pop back as I try the whole time to think about it. What's up, bros? Mason calling in from Lansdale. Um, calling in after the game. I mean, that's just, uh, you came out flat. Phillies came out flat. They didn't look like they wanted to be there. Um, JT has looked abysmal. The entire batting lineup way didn't want to be there. And honestly, I, I don't even think Aaron Nola had that bad of an outing. Um, he did what we wanted him to do. You know, you know he's going to give up home runs. It's, it's going to happen. He gave up two, but they were solo shots. So he, he felt like you were at least in the game with him doing that. Like a solid performance, not the greatest. That sixth inning could have been polished up. Speaking of the sixth inning, what the fuck was that? Like what, what the actual hell did I watch the sixth inning? You got two runners on with no outs, and you can't get one in? I mean, the, the game is, is still right there for the taking. And, you know, it's cute getting those two runs in the eighth inning, but the Mets responded right back. And what just happened is the biggest rival, those disgusting, crayon-eating Mets fans, they they came out and they pants you. They pants you. And now you're in the position that the Braves weren't against us the past two years in the postseason. So you better wake the hell up for Game 4. I know we're not feeling confident about Ranger Game 4, but, you know, we, we need everything we got tomorrow night. If we somehow get magic, if we somehow get the first half of Ranger Suarez, then who knows? The problem is you might lose one nothing. The problem is you might lose two nothing. And I am glad that for the first couple of calls here, we've gotten I'm not gonna say love for Aaron Nola, but I I do think it's harsh to sit here and just despise Aaron Nola. He wasn't good enough though. I do think we need to find that balance. He wasn't good enough. For a road playoff start, he needed to be cleaner. I think they smelled blood, and he was really getting hit hard. Those first couple of innings, I was wondering, should Rob Thompson get out ahead of this and go in a, d- a different direction? Now, quite frankly, I'm not sure if you even have any other potential guys to go to because every number called in the pen come up so small that do you roll the dice and think what's best is just trot Nola out there consistently and see if he could find a groove and see if he can settle in because any other name is getting getting touched up every single one every one and I just wish they were able to keep the game to a four nothing lead instead of allowing it to drag into a six nothing lead because when they finally did have a pulse when they finally did show some life it was cut into a you know what was it six two at that point could you imagine if it was four two how much the back end of the game changes their bullpen is not sensational okay you can get to their guys uh, but I guess when you have to bat Austin Hayes. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. I remember what I was going to say because, well, Rojas batted late too, right? Now, one, I don't know exactly if it would be executed the way that it needs to be, but I believe it was the second inning. Hold on. I got my notes. I have my small notepad notes, which then I transfer to my big notepad notes. So, I believe it was the second inning. Hold on. That's game one. It's game two. Game three. Nick. No, no, no. Was it the third inning? No. Yes, it was. Third inning. Third inning. And Mundo Sosa was hit by a pitch. And that was the leadoff man of the inning. You had first and second for Bryce 
with two L. Oh, that was later on. My point was, why didn't Rojas bunt? The score was one nothing because Alonzo had the home run in the second. The following inning, you get Edmundo Sosa on. I think you got to bunt. Because if you run through that inning again, and, and that's what you were preaching all year long. Rojas bunting. They showed the signs of that in the regular season. If that's not the time to do it, then when would the time to do it be? That's where Rob irritates me. Come on, Rob. You got to tell Rojas there's only one thing to do up there. Get in Mundo Sosa over. This offense flatlines way too damn much. Now's the time. It's Johan Rojas we're talking about. And if I remember correctly, that would have scored a run. I want to run through the inning for you. Sosa hit by a pitch. Rojas struck out swinging. Schwarber struck out swinging. Turner singled. Sosa to second. If you bunt over Sosa, he's on second and Trey singles to left field. Do you send Sosa home? Listen, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe he stops at third base. I I don't know. Maybe Dusty Wathen, whatever. I don't know. But in the moment, I thought, could have tied it up. And could you imagine what changes when it's 1-1? When you see that goose egg staring at you in the face for as long as it does, as you start to run through the game, it's the fourth inning, it's the fifth inning, it's the sixth inning. Dude, they don't score early in games. It's three games against the Mets. You're waiting until what inning to finally get something across home plate. Outside of the Kyle Schwarber leadoff bomb, which then it stayed 1-0 forever. That's not going to cut it. Especially with the makeup of a team that should have a juggernaut offense. That's the way this whole thing was structured. And if you can't execute it all, one of the areas I thought this team was different from years past was it wasn't only about the offense, especially early in the season. I did sort of change my expectations on the pitching staff as time progressed. But what you saw was Sanchez, Ranger, Nola, Wheeler, and you had the offense. And why I was so confident was if there was a time where your offense maybe only produces two or three runs, we might have Wheeler, Nola, Ranger be able to throw Cy Young caliber stuff. So if it is a quieter week or a quieter couple of days or a quieter series for your offense, maybe your pitching can wow you for a little bit. This is more regular season talk than postseason talk, but that was sort of my thought process for the identity of this year's Phillies team. And, you know, I I guess silly because Zach Wheeler can throw arguably one of the best postseason performances I've ever seen and you lose the baseball game. So I guess it doesn't really matter on what I thought this team was built like and how I thought they had maybe an extra layer to them. Uh, You can see that even if your pitching is fantastic, the offense drags you down. They suffocate you. They take any sort of good vibe and good, uh, you know, good, um, good possibilities that could happen. And they destroy them. The opposite is when they get rolling and they're cooking, nothing can slow you down. Even a bad bullpen can't slow you down, as you saw in the ninth inning and in the late innings against the Mets in game two. The issue is, it's too inconsistent. Literally too inconsistent. All right, let's go to Rowdy. Hey, bros. Rowdy from Syracuse. Well, what the fuck? Can't fucking manufacture a run. Barely getting any hits. Harper strikes out on three swings with two guys on base, having only swung at one actual strike. I mean, that was our opportunity right there in the sixth. And just squandered it. Nola did, I mean, honestly, Nola was 
fine enough. Not great, but you, you got to put some. You got to put some runs to back them up. At this point, tomorrow, I'm almost in the camp of just put Wheeler out there. Tomorrow's it. There's no more after that if you don't get through tomorrow. Let all the horses out of the fucking barn and actually make competitive at bats. Don't swing for the moon. Just try to get on fucking base. Oh. Wow, this is frustrating. I get it, man. I get it. So this is courtesy of Matt Gelb. Phillies had Sean Manaya on the ropes in the sixth inning with back-to-back walks to begin it. He recorded the next six outs on only 13 pitches. So it essentially defines all of the nonsense that we've seen offensively. few things from Rob after the game. He thinks the group's resilient. I don't know. I'm not buying it. I, I, I heard him say it post-game. I waited to hear him speak before I recorded the show because I wanted to hear what he had to say. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, not re- I'm not really buying the tone. I'm not buying the tone from Topper. He looks defeated. Visually, he looks defeated. He looks beat up. He looks like a man that has a ton of pressure on him. It doesn't feel the same as when you're playing with a bunch of house money. And I could see it in his face. For whatever that's worth. All right, we're going to shut it down. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. We'll talk tomorrow. Should be fun. See you then.